Getting things done can feel amazing, but when your to-dos keep piling up and the work seems never ending, it's time to start waving the red flags. Before we get into my rules for healthy productivity, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, my new favorite platform for building beautiful websites and growing your business online. The reason I'm making this video is because of my own personal countless breakdowns of feeling overwhelmed and just at the end with my workload of studying or working and I would also say that I'm a great example of someone who has fallen into a toxic relationship with work and taken on the mentality of the more I work the better and attaching my self-worth to my productivity which as you can imagine also amplifies the complex of <laughs> feeling guilty when I'm not working but my friends I am so happy that you're here because I've discovered that it does not have to be this way it does not have to be a cycle of short circuits productivity can be approached in a sustainable and healthy way let's talk about the why real quick why am i trying to improve my productivity first i believe in working smarter not harder and my goal here is to manage my work better so that i can manage my time outside of work and outside of studying outside of productivity better and enjoy my life more <clears throat> i think this is one of my most important lessons that I've learned this year is that my capacity to enjoy life, no matter what's going on, defines a part of my happiness and satisfaction. So it's sort of the one thing that I try to balance throughout anything. So today I'm going to outline how I have rebuilt my foundation of productivity, how I am able to detach from it and rest deeply, while getting things done more efficiently. Structure-wise, this video is broken down into two parts. First is setting boundaries, and the second is managing focus, which both work interdependently. So if you are feeling goofy, you can also watch the second part first. The overarching theme here is sleep. Sleep is queen. What I want you to take away from this video and the reason why I'm starting with this is because of its importance. I want you to take away that within any problem that you see in your productivity system, sleep and mental health are the first ones to take care of. Of course, you will still have to sort of keep going even when things are not super easy, but I hope that if you remember that sleep that your sleep and your mental health are your foundation of functioning, that you can move throughout life without damaging your well being, as I have definitely done in the past. What happens when you see sleep as a high priority is that not only do you prioritize the amount of sleep you get, so the hours that you sleep. You prioritize your mornings, your focus and energy, as well as your unwinding. I see all of these aspects as a consecutive cycle, which impact your ability to be productive immensely. The first step here for me is having a set time when I am done with, in my case, it is uh, a day of work at home. For you, it may be studying. More importantly <laughs> than just having that set time is respecting that time. Because to me, respecting that time means respecting my life outside of work. If you've been diving into focused productivity for hours, it is natural to still have a lot of thoughts swirling around in your head concerning what you were working on and focusing on, even when you are miles away from doing that or working on something. I mean, how many times has school and work haunted me? Countless, countless, y'all. This is why I recommend 
putting effort into your unwinding. And I will talk about how to best do this in a minute. But before that, I just want to say that to me, consciously tuning out thoughts of what you were just doing and focusing on and disconnecting from that is the prerequisite to deep rest and enjoying your life. actually discovered the power of unwinding and disconnecting in this way because I usually walk my dog right after work and found so much solace in just that 30 minutes of being active and breathing fresh air and I like to see this period as sort of a buffer a buffer activity it sort of creates this time for your brain to move into or out of your productivity mindset instead of being just a hard cutoff once the clock strikes, let's say, 5 p.m. And what I personally love about physical activities during this period is that it is another way to get you out of your head and into the present moment, into your body. Whether this is when you take a shower, whether this is when you clean your house, um, perhaps you decide to walk home from work or school, or go to the gym for an hour. I feel like this would also be a great way to start a healthy habit in that period, or it could also be a spot for a new hobby of yours that also helps you expand your life outside of work, which is something that I've been working on a lot, um, just to sort of rebuild a good relationship with work um, in sort of creating more of what my life means outside of it. This next rule is already sort of a transition into the second part of this concept and productivity approach. It is honoring your bedtime slash energy is everything, which that is going to connect to managing your focus, the second part of this video. Personally, I feel like if you implement a buffer activity right after work for about 30 to 60 minutes, you are off to a great start to be able to unwind better and rest better. So the following are a couple of aspects that I like to keep in mind to honor my bedtime as best as I can, meaning that I can get the best sleep and rest that I can. Are you looking to create a beautiful website for the project that you're working on? Here is why I am making one with Squarespace for a secret project that I am planning to share with y'all by the end of this year. Whether you sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online and create a community by using their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. Of course, you can also display posts from your social media profiles and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. If this is what you're looking for, head over to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com slash Yusuf and save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you to Squarespace for working with me. And now let's move on. I believe that becoming better at time management is a vital skill if you want to build a healthy approach to productivity because a schedule as counterintuitive as it sounds, actually creates freedom. But it's not just time that passes throughout the day. It's also your energy and focus that deplete over the course of a day. And that is what I'd like to highlight here.
For this rule, there are two things that I like to keep in mind when I am scheduling focused productivity. The first one is how much focus does this task require in terms of the skills that are needed to get this task done? The second point is how long can I work on this task while remaining focused? And this should sort of prompt us to figure out optimal segments to be working on one type of task. I, I feel like I'm still working on categorizing my tasks, but right now I sort of categorize my to-do lists into skills that require more brain power and concentration and even creativity, sort of skills like creating a concept or writing that where you sort of make something from nothing, I consider those to be like more brain power required tasks. And then we have other tasks that in my mind are sort of easier to do, slash I can also do them when my focus is low, when my creativity is drained, such as answering emails, for example, or I even find that in this category, I like to add in designing things for fun or just like updating things organizing my notion, tasks like that. What I like to do is sometimes I sprinkle in easier tasks, like I mentioned, as answering my emails between more intense, bigger blocks of, for example, writing sessions. So let's say I'll have two hours of writing in the morning, then I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I need a break. So I take a break, which we'll talk about really soon. And then I work on an easier task for 30 minutes, which, which would be, I don't know, reviewing documents, answering emails, and then I would head back into writing again. So as we've just talked about structuring your schedule, considering what tasks you do when in the day with your focus in mind, let's talk about the actual focused work sessions for my next rule. Now I have found that the simplest approach for me to sitting down and getting something done is working with a Pomodoro timer. I always return back to Pomodoros because not only is it easier for myself to convince myself to sit down for a limited amount of time to focus, but also working with these 25 to 50 minute segments or however long you define your Pomodoros allows me to schedule in these predetermined blocks into my day. So instead of scheduling two hours of writing, I schedule in four Pomodoros of writing. And I've just found it such a good way to sort of manage, okay, I can probably get done this amount of focused Pomodoros of doing my difficult tasks, this amount of Pomodoros sort of to balance as well of easier tasks. And that's how I like to structure my day, encompassing my focus and also using Pomodoros in my schedule. Now, I think my next rule has sort of been emphasized through our past couple of years, also experiencing a pandemic with a lot of people, a lot more people working from home, but I think this just concerns more the aspect of our lives that is based in the fact that we, a lot of us work from laptops. A lot of us work on computers that are connected to the internet and the fact that it is way, <laughs> way too easy to just get lost in a second. You could literally just go from one tab on your computer where you're getting things done to another tab where you're spending hours of watching YouTube videos. It can help to create a physical difference between where you work and where you chill. So ideally you can dedicate a desk or even just a spot at, for example, your dining table to focused work. And you can try to respect that and not do anything but focused work in that spot. Another option here would be if you have your work computer that you, for example, get from your company and then your private private one, I think that can help create a distinction. But if a physical workspace difference or having two different computers is not an option, it can help to distinguish your work life from your private life or your study life and school life from your private life by having different digital workspaces, even just in one computer. 
ways you can do this is for example having different logins in one computer so one for your school life and one for your personal life i personally also distinguish my notion setup for example between my personal space and my workspace and i believe that this is something that you can also do for other tools and applications to hopefully create a better separation and help you get into the mindset once you enter your digital workspace and ideally as i said also have a physical dedicated workspace our last topic here today under managing focus is taking breaks and this is important because i have experienced i have experienced too many distracting and derailing breaks and to express the extent the hilarious extent of this it's been countless times where i told myself okay 10 minute break and then <laughs> i just kind of ruined the work day by doing something and being distracted or for four hours later i would be like oh shit i actually started this as a break and completely completely derailed my focus so during these breaks i like to not switch up my energy too much so I like to do things that sort of keep me kind of calm but bring me into the present moment it should definitely still sort of feel rejuvenating even though it's just five to ten minutes my favorite things to do in five to ten minute breaks are definitely stepping away from my computer opening a window and breathing fresh air doing some stretches or enjoying a snack just while being present Often I also just spend five minutes interacting with my pet and that is actually so <laughs> rejuvenating and refreshing and I think animals are honestly the magic key to presence. Now, if we contrast this to my other category of breaks, this is how I experience it, but I sort of see it as if I do these things such as going on social media, or even reading a book that just pulls me in, it pulls me into another world. It kind of derails my focus from just being present and calm into being excited about a whole nother thing. And the more engaged I become with whatever I'm doing in my break, the harder it is to get back into my focus, into being productive again, into studying again. So. The whole concept here is to set ourselves up for success and engage less <laughs> with things that are highly stimulating during these shorter breaks. I think self-awareness plays a huge role here and maybe it helps you if you sort of list your break activities um, and put them somewhere where you can see them on a post-it note or I don't know, on your Notion home base where you can be reminded and kind of inspired uh, to take different types of breaks and have fun with them. So I hope that you are able to implement whatever you need from these six rules into your life to help you um, enjoy your life more outside of work and also feel super good about being able to work hard when you intend to. With that being said, we're back with purple and at the end of this video, I will see you in a video very soon. Make sure to check out my Squarespace link once you're ready to launch your website. And until then, bisous.